A company packages a particular product in cans of three different sizes, and each is on a different production line. Most con cans conform to specifications, but sometimes there are reasons for nonconformance, categorized as a blemish, a crack on the can, or something else. A sample of nonconforming units was selected from the three lines, and they were categorized according to why they didn't conform, and we have this two-way table of the data. Using a 5% level, we want to find out if the lines are homogeneous with respect to reasons for nonconformance. So basically what we want to find out is if the different reasons for nonconformance would be the same across the three lines, or if maybe there are some lines that churn out cans with different types of issues than others. What we need to do for this is set up our null and alternative as we would for any test of homogeneity. And we can usually just write these out in words. That's the simplest way. So our null hypothesis is that the lines are the same with regards to the population proportions of the different types of nonconformities. And the alternative is that there is some difference then in those types of nonconformities. Now that we have our null and our alternative written out, the next step is to calculate our test statistic, and for that we need our expected counts. These nine values in the table, which are your different lines, different blemishes, this is called a 3 by 3, give us our O's, our observed counts, and for each of these we need to find expected count. How you do that is you take the total from the row times the total from the column divided by the total sample size. And to save us some work, the totals have been provided here for us. So for line 1 with blemish, we have 89 as the row total. We take that times the column total of 112. We divide by the total sample size, which is 263. And this will provide our expected count for that cell, which is 37.901. So this matches up with this one. For the next one, if I move over, I've got a total of 89 in that row. That column has an 81 down here. And we again divide by the total number of 263, because that's our total sample. And for that one, we're going to get 27.411. You proceed through the table doing that for all nine cells, and I'll add those all for you here now. Now that we have all the observed counts, we can, or all the expected counts, we can find our test statistic, our chi-squared, which we add up our observed count minus our expected count squared divided by our expected count. So O minus E squared divided by E. And we'll do that for each of the nine different cells that we have in our table. So we get chi-squared equal to 34 minus 37.901 squared over 37.901 plus 23 minus 27.411 squared over 27.411. And you'll continue this for all of the nine cells. I won't write them all here, but I'll just put dot 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 to the very last one, which would be the 10 minus 7.719 squared over 7.719. So if you add up this term for all nine of the cells, you should reach a test statistic of 9.984. The degrees of freedom is number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1. This we said was a 3 by 3. So we'll get 2 times 2, and degrees of freedom will be 4. So we want to look for our test statistic in row 4 of our table. We see that 9.984 is between 9.49 and 11.14, meaning the bounds on our p-value is a 0 0.025 and a 0 0.05. Since our p-value is less than 0 0.05, we will reject the null here and determine that we do have a difference in the lines with respect to the proportions of the cans with the different types of nonconformities. So our conclusion has been written out here that we have significant evidence of difference of the lines with respect to the population and proportions of cans with the different types of nonconformities. To check our conditions here, all our expected counts need to be at least 5. If you look at them, the smallest one was 7.719, so this test is valid in that all of our counts are large enough. The only way to get around that condition is to just take a larger sample size until all of your E's that you calculate would be at least 5.